Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing U.S. immigration form changes. It came to my attention the last couple of days that the form for advanced parole and work authorization. So uh, advanced parole is basically the ability to preserve one's status if you're pending, in this case, most of the cases we deal with this in the context of, uh, it's a K-1 visa, so it's advanced parole pending adjustment to green card status. And you basically get advanced parole and it allows, it's a travel document that allows you to leave the country while your adjustment to green card status is processing. Employment authorization is similar. It provides employment authorization while an adjustment is pending. So long story short, what does all this mean? Well, what it means is they're doing form changes for the forms associated with both of these benefits. And we've seen a number of form changes the past few years. This really started happening under Trump, and frankly, and this isn't getting partisan, I'm, I'm not thrilled with the way the immigration system is at the moment, so it's not Trump or this administration, that administration. No, frankly, I think, I think they've been woefully lacking and they've just allowed the immigration system, I hesitate to call it overall a quagmire, but it's getting to the point where it's hard to say it's anything else. But one of the things is useless form changing is a, is a perfect example of something that's pretty counterproductive. I mean. I went through like 12 years of doing you know, practicing immigration law where the form didn't change at all. I think I was using the same I-130 you know, when I started that I used like three years ago or four years ago. You know, I mean, and then they started changing the forms and then they really started changing the forms. You know, so the addition dates, they'd go out of date and you had to stay on top of it. I, in my opinion, it was either designed to be sort of intentionally obtuse I do kind of get they wanted some more information. And when they put out, for example, I think when they put out the first amended I-129F I form, I went through it and I said, you know, actually I kind of see they want some extra data. I, that made some sense. But then it got to the point where it seemed like they were changing forms over just little kind of almost cosmetic issues. And that caused me to really, it caused me to really ask the question, I mean, do we really need to, to be doing it this way? And I came to the conclusion that honestly, this seems a little bit frivolous, but okay, whatever. Long story short, forms do change with respect to US immigration. It's a good idea to be aware of that. And for those who feel like they're a bit overwhelmed by dealing with all these forms and the changed additions and the addition date, and this addition date will be allowed for this time period until that time period. If you feel it's overwhelming, it may not be a terrible idea to contact a legal professional, gain some insight and guidance into how best to proceed.